This time on Flawed Off-Road, I'm gonna take a crack at notching some tube with the Evo saw. So, you know, there's a whole lot of different ways you can do this without needing a whole saw or a tube notcher. Basically, you just have to make two straight cuts. Porter band, grinder with a cutoff wheel, sawzaw, or in my case, we're going to be using this Evolution dry cut sauna. This is the 14 inch one. It's got the steel blade. So the material we're going to be cutting today is two inch DOM with quarter wall. It's probably a little bit overkill for what I'm doing, which is making a traction bar. This is going to be my lower bar, and I actually notched this one out on the drill press with the hole saw. It was way more work than I wanted it to be, and my buddy was like, let's look up chop saw notching and thank me later. So that's what I did, and here we are. Okay, so you want to start by making a mark on the top and the bottom. So if you're using one of these other cutting methods, you're actually going to have to um, make your angle mark right on here and then follow that line as you cut. But if you're using a chop saw or dry cut saw, you can just do it the easy way. So in this case, we are going to be joining it to this bushing sleeve. So the first thing I need to do is set my saw to 30 degrees which is the angle of the cup that we're going to be making and now if you're curious how i came up with that number i will talk about that in a little bit and i'll even put up like a chart on the screen that way you know roughly the type of angle that you need to cut and that's it's based on if you're doing a 90 degree joint an angled joint or if you're doing like a smaller size to a bigger size pipe and things like that good golly jesus that's tight whoa so there's, this is adjustable from zero to 45. So we're just gonna line up 30 with that line. Tighten our back down. Not Okay, so once you have your uh, 12 and six top and bottom marks on there, Get everything lined up. Well, here goes nothing. This is my first try. This is All right, now we just gotta flip it over and do the same thing. Just get your marks vertical again. And then we're gonna see where the blade lies. similar in size. So that's what you're left with. Nice little V. The real test is, we'll see how it fits. Not as good as I hoped. It's because this is quarter wall and it's hidden on those inner lips. So if I just shave those away a little bit, I'm pretty sure this the contour of this looks like it's gonna sit down in there quite nice, actually. So let's clean those up a little bit. So we're gonna just try to get these little inside edges cleaned up a little bit. That's looking pretty good, but it's crooked. Okay, so clearly my first attempt is uh, not as good as it could be. 
So imagine this is easier to do with thinner tubing. This is a uh, quarter wall DOM. So I did have to take a good bit out of there. Now you can see I was pretty close to my mark, at least on the first cut. I guess I missed it a little bit on this one and that's why I had to take more material away. And part of that just comes with not knowing exactly how this saw cuts because it was literally the second and third cut that I've made with the saw. So I suppose with a little bit of practice, this is a phenomenal way to notch tubing because I literally just had to clean it up a little bit and it's now a snug fit. And I checked it against, used the square and checked it and it's true or within like a degree. So it's close enough for what I'm doing. The bonus is that it kind of gives you a nice little taper to lay your weld in. All right, so now we got to talk about how you determine the degree that you set that saw to make that cut. And all this information I found online, and I'm about to put a chart up on the screen that kind of gives you some rough examples. Like if you're doing same size pipe, 90, it's roughly a 30 degree cut. So, the way you figure out what angle that you set this at, there's a formula for it. Okay, so I found a post online on Pirate. It linked to another post on offroadfab.net by a guy named Mark Guger, I think. It lays out the general idea of what angle to pick this based on the size of the tubing that you're using and if you're doing a 90, some kind of an angle, whatever. Okay, so you'll see my beautiful hand-drawn diagram here. This is all assuming you are doing a 90 degree joint. This is size A and B are the same. And the bigger you get in tubing size, the bigger this angle gets. So I went off of this recommendation and I used the 30 degree cut and it worked out really nicely. So that's what you call your base angle. What if you wanna do tubing that's two different sizes? Once if you wanna go inch and three quarter up to two inch, 25 degrees. Inch and three quarter down to inch and a quarter, 45 degrees. Inch and a quarter up to inch and three quarter, 20 degrees. And from one inch to two inch, 12 degrees. And it basically, it just changes, you know, the mouth. It changes how wide or narrow it is to match the other pipes. So you see this little note down here, like I said before, the thicker material you're using, you may have to adjust those numbers a little bit or just take a grinder to it. Okay, so moving on. So what are you supposed to do if you're doing something besides a 90? Let's say you want an 18 degree joint. Assuming you're using inch and three quarter tubing, let's say you want an 18 degree angle. So if you refer back to that first page, the base angle for that size tubing is 28 degrees. So basically what you need to do is subtract that 18 degrees from one of your cuts and add it to the opposite cut on the opposite side. So in this case, you end up with a 10 degree cut on one side and a 46 degree cut on the other side. Now, if you're limited to 45 on your saw, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. Obviously, those cuts still need to originate from that center line at 12 and six o'clock. That's important. And as long as you get your cut right, you're gonna end up with a really nice looking notch. The little just kind of drawing to illustrate that, you know, the dotted line is your center line. You got 10 degree on one side, 46 on the other. Okay, so when you want to join a tube that's, you know, 90 degrees, all that applies. But let's say you want it like, I don't know, 19.6 degrees off of 90, which is what I need to do for the kicker on the track bar, traction bar, I mean. I'm going to do this one kind of as a practice piece, but... If I like how it fits, I'll leave it in there and I'll make two of them on the bar. But the, the main one I want needs to be like a lot longer than this. <clears throat> so I practiced got some toilet paper tubes and I had estimated 18 degrees. So basically it's going to be the same thing. The bar, the top bar is level like this. The bottom one's at an angle. And I want this pipe or this kicker to come straight off of this one so that it's actually angled back. So my weird angle notch is gonna actually be on the top. So I took the liberty of making a 
top and bottom mark on this one, just like the last one. So this side I'm going to be doing just the normal straight up notch, and then on this other side I'll do the weird one. See what happens. Okay, so after making my first notch, I had a little bit of technical difficulties and it was a little bit off, but I got it fitting the tooth. I decided to set it on there, see which way it set better. So that was this way. And I stuck this right on there to get the difference. And because of my uh, mishap, if you want to call it that, the number is actually now 17 and a half degrees, which is fine. So I've got this marked out where I need a 47 and a half degree there and a 12 and a half degree there and that should do it. But the problem I'm having now, this one that goes to 45, so I was gonna just do a 45 and 15 or whatever. All right, so now that I've done some practice cuts, one, the total paper tubes, and then two, with this little short piece that's too short, now we're gonna make the kicker that's gonna go between the upper and lower bar on my traction bar on the G. I've determined it needs to be roughly seven inches long on a sleeve, as long as it's in the ballpark, it's fine. So again, we're using the two inch quarter wall tube. I do not recommend learning how to notch tube with quarter wall, because it just it makes it harder. It's harder to cut. You have to trim this inner lip in order to get the same fit that you would get otherwise with like eight wall. So basically this is the piece I'm gonna cut. So I determined that the difference, I would actually need 47 and a half and 12 and a half, but unfortunately 45 is as far as this saw goes. So I'm just gonna go with 45 and 15. And then if I gotta grind it a little bit or whatever, that's fine. Let's see if we can make it work. So I've already got my seven inch piece of VOM tubing cut and I've got it marked. So far, both times, I've tried to do this on this thicker tube. I've actually missed my mark just a little bit. Hitting this mark, like with the very edge of your cut on the very edge of this cut, it's pretty crucial to make this painless, but it's not the end of the world if you miss a little bit. So that time, actually did a pretty good job. So now I gotta change the angle of the saw to 15, flip it over this way, and see what we come off with. All right, so this time, I actually hit the march pretty daggone good. So, that should give me the angle I need. You can see how it, it hits these corners right here. So I'm gonna have to trim that away and then do my 30 degree cuts down here and then we can give her a test fit. All right, so this is what we're bracing. I'm gonna put the one a straight cut on the bottom. I can work with that. Now it'll move up here farther after I trim out these inner edges. Let's go do that. So all I had to do was take a little bit off of those inner edges. I actually took a little too much. Used a uh, carbide bit on a die grinder, but you can use pretty much anything you want. Okay, let's see how we did here. Yeah. Not too shabby. Oh, sorry for the lighting, but the gaps are all really nice. It ended up like a little closer to the back than I was going for. I had it envisioned, like I measured from about right here, but I wasn't sure exactly how much extra to leave on there. So. It'll work right here. Now I can take that little one I was working on and have it fit roughly right there. Yeah. Be in business. I still haven't even tacked that on yet. And I fast forwarded a little bit, but here is what I came up with. And 
You really can't argue with these notches. So again, you don't gotta be no pro to do this. This is literally my first time notching too. Oh yeah, one more thing. This is gonna be my next video, how to put this thing together. Swag off-road press brake, finger brake. And don't forget the obligatory Jeep shot. I can't wait to take this thing out and thrash on it. Okay, so there it is all installed back on the Jeep and painted and everything. Turned out pretty decent in my opinion. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Yeah, it ran a little long. I was trying to learn how to do it and show you it can be done at the same time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.